Thank you. And thank you for letting me be here today to share about my love for Jesus Christ and his love for you. Amen. Let's pray. Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth, who art, who was, and who ever will be, holy is your name. And holy are those who call upon your name, God. Blessed are we who receive the spirit of the Holy Spirit in our lives. May it empower us today. God, may my words be your words. May they be received. Clean up where I mess up and cause us to hear afresh. In Jesus' name we proclaim it. Amen. Amen. Be ye holy, for I am holy. Those are the words of Scripture. That's what God says. I have a problem with that. I do. I do not think of myself as holy. Be ye ho Next slide. Do you believe in God? Yes. Let me hear it. Do you believe in God? Yes. Everybody, anybody not believe in God? Okay. What's the next slide say? What's it say? Do you see the difference? Yeah. You believe in God. Do you believe God? So many times we believe in God except when his word goes against what we think. Now, if God says, be ye holy as I am holy, is he asking you to do something he can't do? Let me ask you. Next slide. Can things be holy? Now, I'm not trying to cause any trouble with people like John, who, who has a different theology, all right? Um, uh, but, but I want to know, really and truly, have you been taught that things cannot be holy? Anybody? I was taught that. All right? Things cannot be holy. Before I trick you into anything, let me tell you what the Scripture says. Moses has gone off to the burning bush. All right? He spent years being trained for this moment. He stands before the bush because he's curious. He's never seen anything like it. What does God first say to Moses? Anybody know? Yeah, take off your You're standing on what? Holy ground. Ground can be holy? God seems to say so. Now, Moses goes through the wilderness and, and the people seem to be a bit lost, you know. They, they don't appreciate manna and they have these all these problems and what's he do god says we'll make you a tabernacle he gives all the directions and he gives all the directions for all the fine linens that will that are enclosed the tabernacle what's in the center of the tabernacle holy of holies i think things can be holy israel builds a temple king solomon david wasn't allowed to but solomon does in the center of that temple, what is there? Holy of Holies. Yes. And the, the instruments there, they were talked about as being holy. Now then, how many of you think of yourself as holy? Next slide. Hmm? How many of you think of yourself as holy? Let me see it. Uh -huh. How many of you think of others as holy? You know somebody you think is holy. Mm-hmm. The difference between you and them is they're right and you're wrong. <laughs> I want to give you a definition of holiness in just a minute. You can go ahead and put it up on the screen if you want to, the definition of holiness. It's the next slide. Because one of the problems we have in communications is this thing called language, and it really causes problems, all right? One of the reasons that when we rewrote the, the Bible into English, we used the Greek version because there's only about 10,000 words in Hebrew. <laughs> there's millions in Greek, it seems like. All right. So we wanted to be more expressive. We wanted to have more understanding. Our understanding of holiness has been that holiness means without sin. Well, it still does. Even with this definition, I'm going to come back and tell you that I believe that's true. But let's read this definition for right now. This is out of Harper's uh, Bible Dictionary, and that's a very good source. And here's what it says. Holiness, a term in Hebrew, probably meaning separate from ordinary or profane. Also in Hebrew and in Greek, holy implies connection with God or the divine. Thus, 
God is holy and people, things, and actions may be holy by association with God. Holiness may also include the idea of consecration to God and purity from what is evil or improper. Now, that's the working definition I want to start with, all right? And I want to take a look at that for a moment in relation to what holiness really means in our personal lives. First of all, it says it implies a connection with God. You're here because you have a connection with God. Aren't you? Mm -hmm. Are you at least searching for one? It also says that holiness and people and things may be holy by association. Are you associated with God? It also may include the ideas of consecration to God and purity from what is evil or improper. That's where we have a problem, isn't it? We don't see ourselves as pure from what is evil or improper. At least I don't. Now, I told you before, I'll tell you again, I had a friend of mine, an African-American pastor. He was also my boss. And he said, confession is good for the soul, but bad for the reputation. <laughs> I am here to confess. As I was thinking about this sermon, and I had it prepared for two weeks ago, and Ted said, you're not ready yet. I'll let you know when. And so we put it off for a couple of weeks, and he was right. I wasn't ready. I was convinced that I had a message for people who are unable to forgive themselves. You know who that is? The people who have these great testimonies of awful things that happened in their life and how they overcame them. I don't have such a testimony. I have an average sinner. I'm not a great sinner. I'm not good at it. I'm just an average sinner. All right? So I had a message. Now, one of the things they used to tell me in seminary, you can preach to the people or for the people. I was preparing to preach to the people. And that's wrong. And it didn't hit me until Thursday at Bible study. Amen. This message is for me. And for those of you who have trouble with small sins, as well as for those who have trouble with what the world calls great sins. Now, depending upon your domination, you may have an understanding of small sins and great sins, all right? Or you may be like me, all sins are great sins. That's what I know up here. That's not what I know down here, all right? And so I was, I was convinced that I have, I have an understanding, at least up here, of forgiveness. I do. And I can forgive others in a heartbeat. Forgiving myself is trouble. I can go back to things I did in high school, maybe grade school if I can remember back that far. It's more difficult now. Uh, can't remember yesterday, but I can remember 20 years ago. And I can beat myself up. Now, I don't care what you've done. You're not any better at beating yourself up than I am. I am a pro at it. I mean, I've got, I've got certificates in it, all right? I can beat myself up better than anybody else, or at least as good. And that's what this message is really about, understanding who you are in Christ. Because until you learn about the forgiveness of God and really accept it, you'll never be as close to God as you want to be. You, you breathe in the Spirit when you're saved, and you breathe out the Spirit evermore. Breathe in Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, in, out. You say the word of Jesus as you breathe. It's the Spirit of God, the breath of God living in you. And our, our inability to forgive ourselves and to see ourselves the way Jesus sees us gets in the way of it. It keeps us from doing it. Next slide. I want you to just look briefly at some scriptures because I want you to know this is not what I'm saying. This is what God is saying because if I'm saying it, it doesn't mean anything. I mean, I was a cowboy fan. You know, you can't pay attention to me. I'm a recovering cowboy fan. It's okay. 
So, that's right. That's right. I also need new, well, <laughs> all right. So, Ephesians 1.1. 1, 1. It simply says, holy and blameless in love. Ah. So, when we begin to think about being holy and blameless, without love, we don't catch it. What is God's essence? What is, yes, that's it. God is love. I love it when people know answers. All right? My wife knows them all. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, she probably does. So, it's, it's blameless in love. All right? Not in action, but in love. Now, love is an action word, I grant you. But blameless in love, it's not that you've done everything right. It's that God has done everything right. right. It's not about your actions. It's about his actions. Do you see the difference? And so if we can quit thinking about ourselves and who we are and think about who he is, we can experience his true love and forgiveness. It says in Deuteronomy, you are a holy people. Yes, he's talking to Israel. Yes, they were called to be a holy people. And Matthew, in the end of it, says that you are to be a holy people going out and telling the world about who? About Jesus Christ. It's not that you get to go and live in this little corner all by yourself and say, oh, I feel so good. No, you have to go out and share it. And you can't forgive yourself until you begin to interact with others. That's where you get some power of the Spirit in your life. That's where you begin to grow. That's where that breathing in and breathing out of the Holy Spirit really comes to life when you begin to breathe that Spirit on others as Jesus breathed on the disciples. Romans 12, 1, you make your bodies a holy sacrifice. Wow, do I ever fail on that one, I think. Because you see, I live in the Scripture that says, that exercise doesn't profit much. I love that scripture. I pick the scriptures I like. I know you all know, but I pick the scriptures I like. No, when it talks about that, it's talking about the fact that, listen, everywhere you go, you take Jesus with you. And every conversation you have, Jesus is with you. Don't go places. Don't say things that you would want Jesus to hear, all right? Because the Holy Spirit dwells in you. Thessalonians repeats that love equals holiness. God repeats this for us because it's important. Brother Sam Paper and Sister Prickle, they live in every church and every home, right? That's the person you have to love, the person that irritates you the most. From the cross, Jesus said, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Who was he forgiving? Those who were crucifying him, among others. And you and I as well. If Jesus forgives you, how dare you not forgive others? It doesn't mean that you forgive their actions. It doesn't mean that there won't be repercussions for actions. Forgiveness does not wipe out your actions in this life. It does wipe them out in heaven. <laughs> Hebrews 12, 10. Discipline brings holiness. Wow. I, uh, I married a very godly woman. It's been my salvation in many ways. And uh, she was a Baptist. No, no, John, she didn't buy into all the stuff that you teach. But nevertheless... She was a Baptist, and uh, she, uh, she taught me about tithing. And I didn't want to because we were a young married couple living with somebody else's furniture, you know, and uh, uh, paycheck to paycheck was a real stretch. It was tight. And the idea of tithing, I mean, let's put a dollar in the plate, and, you know, because when it passes, I don't want to not have somebody see me not put money in. I mean, how would that look for me not to put a dollar in the plate when it comes by? My wife said, no, no, 10%. I said, well, okay, here's what 10% is. She said, no, no, 10% is of the gross amount. I said, you're crazy, woman. 
Uh, when I got out of the hospital. <laughs> so, the point here was that the discipline of tithing turned from something I had to do to something I couldn't wait to do. It became a joy. And so he's talking about the discipline of this thing called love. Now, slide eight says, God calls you to holiness, therefore, and I've just talked about the major and the minor of it, this is slide eight. But I also, he says that God is, Jesus was in the world, but not of the world. Our problem is we look at ourselves in the world, all right? We major on that in the world part. I look back at some of the things I've done. No, I never killed anybody, and I never spent time in prison, and I really appreciate those who, who have that as a testimony of overcoming. It's powerful. But I, too, have failed my God. And we have all failed God for all that's in and fallen short of the glory of God. What I need to know is that that's not the end of the world. I need to talk for a minute about the need to understand God's forgiveness. My cross. I love to have it when I when I speak to people. By the way, I don't speak, I preach. My wife teaches, I, I preach. That's what I do. I love to hold it. It was given to me by a daughter. It says dad on it. It, may, it represents love to me. And it reminds me every time I speak to love the people I speak to. And today it reminds me to love myself as well. It is the atoning sacrifice of Jesus upon the cross. The atoning sacrifice of Jesus. Folks, I need to stand back here. I'll get out of the screen. When we accept Jesus Christ, his blood covers us. There was a member of this group some time ago when I first joined it, and I was in the Bible study, and somehow it came up that the Scripture says that, that God forgets our sin. And this fellow had a problem with it. Great man, he's moved on now to another, another location, but he said, I don't understand how God can forget. Well, God's not like me, an old man with problems of memory. Now, he's old, but he had no problem with memory. No, it is because your sin no longer exists with him. The blood washes you clean. Removing your sin as far as the east is from the west, it no longer exists. We hold on to it. We beat ourselves up with it. Somehow we think that'll make us feel better. It doesn't. It gets in the way of our spirituality. It gets in the way of our holiness. It gets in the way of our ministry. God paid for our price, and for us not to accept that and put our arms around it is a sin. It's blocking the flow of the Holy Spirit. God's atoning sacrifice is enough for the very worst sinner among us. It is. And we have to accept that. Now, it's, it's hard. It is. You know, every week I have to redo it. Every day I have to redo it because I'm constantly messing up. I say something in a tone to my wife that I shouldn't. The tone is sacrifice. I... I get mad at a driver. I don't do that anymore because of the blood of Jesus, but that's only sacrifice. I have done it. I no longer wave digitally at anybody. The only <laughs> sacrifice. <laughs> so quickly, in the, in the 30 seconds I have left, let's go to slide nine. Necessary for personal holiness for those who rely on the blood of Christ, three things. Self-forgiveness, coming from your relationship with Christ, not from your actions. All right? This is forgiveness, not your actions. Forgiveness of others and love, not their actions. The power of the blood. And helping each other to grow in forgiving love of Christ. No man walks alone. We need each other. The questions for your consideration are now coming up, I hope, because my time just ended. Thank you all so much for letting me speak. May God bless you and keep you. Amen.